Fernando Valencia. Fernando Valencia has been recognized for pioneering the unblinded formula. All of that and more right here, right now, in the Adriana Montes Real Estate Show. Welcome to the Adriana Montes Real Estate Show. I'm so excited that today we're here with an honored guest friend of mine, Fernando Valencia, and you'll hear much more about him shortly. My name is Adriana Montes, and I'm the broker owner of Florida Dreams Realty and Investment Group. I'm here to help you with any questions that you may have about residential or commercial real estate, and my number is 321-689-6258, or you can email me at adriana at floridadreamsrealty.com. Well, Fernando Valencia and I'm blinded. Let's talk about this pioneer, this trailblazer, this amazing entrepreneur that has come to my show. And actually, I had a chance to interact with him so many times, train with him, learn from him, and also go to Grand Cayman with him and the group. And I'm here right now presenting him. I'm super, super, super happy that he is here. He's Colombian. And I can't wait for you to hear about this successful entrepreneur, Latino leader. Fernando, welcome. Uh, thank you, Adriana Montes, so much uh, for having me here. It is an absolute privilege and honor uh, to be co-creating this shared experience with you and all your guests uh, out in Florida and the entire world. And I don't know, I think we're going to have some fun conversations and things to talk about. So please, over to you. Thank you so much, Fernando. And I owe it to Sean Calagui, uh, your leader, my mentor, and also to you and your group about improving, improving the way how we speak, the way how we communicate, the way how we create these shared experiences, and also how we influence people and how we communicate um, through all of these ecosystems. So thank you. I had the privilege to be part of the Unblinded system. And I'm so happy that you're here to share more of that to our audience. So I want to start with uh, your story, your life story. You're Colombian. I'm Colombian. We are actually from the same city, from Cali, from Buga. My mom uh, was born in Buga, so that was so dear to my heart when I got to learn that. And I want you to tell us, uh, you, I know you're first immigration, first generation Im uh, immigrant here. So, Fernando, I would like you to also tell us and tell our audience about Unblinded and how you became involved. Thank you so much. I'm so excited that you're here and I can't wait to hear all of this. Well, Adriana, Unblinded is uh, certainly more than an organization. Uh, it is what we would call a movement, a lifestyle, a way of life. And the fundamental question uh, that we uh, as co-founders, or at least certainly myself, look to answer is why? Why don't honest, hardworking, integrous people ever truly establish the money, time, and magic they want. I don't understand, especially coming from the Latin culture. We're extremely hardworking, dedicated people, and we wanted to bring that work forward. And I have the privilege to learn from our mentor, uh, who I would call my coach, Sean Callagy, the visionary of this work. And he began to teach me this thing called the formula uh, that we will begin to unpack as we go through this conversation. But how I got here was actually through another common uh, mentor that we have. Uh, his name is uh, the guy with the big hands, Tony Robbins. I was 27 years old. I had just already built my first million dollar business when I was 21. I was in the world of event production planning, digital marketing, doing all things, you know, influencer related. And I realized that I wanted more. Uh, that world, unfortunately, is a little empty with fake promises, you know, Rolexes, jets and homes that aren't really theirs. And I was feeling extremely unfulfilled. I had money, I had time, but I had no magic, fulfillment, passion, and I wanted more. And I realized that I didn't know how to do it. So. I knew that the only way to truly achieve the things I want is to model and find people that have exactly what I'm looking for. And no one else in the world had what I thought I wanted at that time, which was Tony Robbins. So I did what most people do. I paid about $15,000. I went to Business Mastery and I began my journey to try to meet Tony Robbins. Little did I know that it wasn't the way it worked in the Tony Robbins ecosystem. And when I went there, I had the incredible opportunity of being a platinum guest and that led me to some pretty extreme uh, and incredible access to people. And as individuals started asking me the same question you asked me, and I shared my dreams of peoplefication, which has now become unblinded, everyone began to ask me the same question. Have you ever heard or met Sean Callagy? And my answer was no. And I was shocked because it came from every direction. It came from platinum partners. It came from the back of the room, the front of the room. It came from crew members. It came from the middle of the room. And everyone began to tell me about this guy, Sean Callagy, who I'd never actually heard of, who was a blind attorney from Paramus. Even though we were both from New Jersey, I never heard his name. And I was committed from that moment 
from that point forward, say, I'm going to meet this man and I'm going to find out what this hype is about. So I did what most people don't. I put my fear of failure and rejection aside and I walked to the front of the room where this man sits. People pay you know, a quarter million dollars a year to be there. I was there with a red leather jacket, as Sean likes to say, a different story, different day. And I began to tell that man who I was and what I wanted. And what I realized fairly quickly, Adriana and everyone, is that this man was telling me things I hoped to hear and gave words to things I thought I knew. As someone who had read over a thousand books, I was certified in dozens of different methods of communication, which I will not mention. I you know, knew a thing or two. I did not think I knew it all. I'm certainly a masterful apprentice. I've tamed my ego in my earlier 20s. And this man began to put words to everything I knew was possible. And when I began to understand his work, his formula, which is called integrity-based human influence, self-influence and process mastery, I knew that I had found gold. And I decided to commit my life, not to him, but to his work and bring it forward. So thank you for asking. You're welcome, Fernando. I had the privilege to meet you in the Unblinded ecosystem uh, that I also joined. And it's been a great journey for the last uh, four years growing uh, as a personal testimony. I grew so much as a professional, as a speaker, as a person. And the, the concept, like you say, of the formula money, time and magic is really what everybody is striving for and dreams about. And again, I'm from Colombia. I came here pursuing the American dream at 18, knowing no English. And you know, I, it has been my American dream, you know, working so hard for it and I was able to get it. But I also heard that your family came from Colombia and I want to also give you some space to share about your family and how was their journey as immigrants and how was your journey? Well, thank you, Adriana. And uh, the truth is I would be nowhere uh, without my mom, my dad and my two brothers. And I've had the privilege to have uh, a lot given from them of love, empathy, respect, morals, values. And there's a couple of things they did not give me, and that was financial abundance and or the understanding of how to do so. Uh, my parents migrated from Columbia in 1986 to Union City, New Jersey. And I always like to say it is wild uh, that I am the son of a man who was literally born in a barn next to horses and pigs in Columbia. And just recently this year, I received the Beacon Award from the Ellis Island Honor Society created by President Ronald Reagan and who honors the top 15 most influential philanthropic immigrants in America. And my parents don't even speak English. How did I possibly begin to accomplish that? That was through this work, the formula. But back to the question. My parents came here from Colombia in 1986. And the reason why my name is Fernando Jesus Valencia and my father's name is Fernando, I am not Fernando Jr. I am Fernando Jesus is because uh, I do believe in God is I was a miracle. Um, when my mother was in her 40s, uh, she had a son. Uh, so imagine this. It's November 3rd, 1990, and Fernando Valencia is born. And after three open heart surgeries in four days, he passed away. And that was my older brother. And my mother, being in her 40s and a God-fearing woman, the doctors told her if she ever tried to have another son again, not only would the baby pass away, there's a very high possibility that she wouldn't make it. Now, my brothers were in their teens and uh, clearly did they not want mom to pass away. So it was a very traumatic uh, and impactful time in my family's life. And my mother being uh, the mother she is, went to Buga, which I did not know. That's where your mother was born, which is incredible and a, a beautiful unifying fact. And she went to El Señor de los Milagros and prayed and said, God, if you give me a boy, I promise I will name him after you. And fast forward one year later, November 1st, which just happens to be All Saints Day, I was born prematurely. In my entire life, I have felt like that has been a blessing. I've always been the quote unquote underdog. I wasn't supposed to be born. I was born premature. I wasn't supposed to make it. I had surgeries uh, as a baby. And I've always felt destined to bring uh, God's work. Uh, I would go with light and integrity to the world. And as a, you know, the youngest of three, I grew up not wanting to be an entrepreneur. I was actually short, shy, and chubby for most of my life. I wasn't the man and the influential person I am today. I was extremely timid and introverted. And I knew uh, that I wanted one thing. And at 13 years old, it wasn't money. It wasn't wealth. Uh, it was actually to keep my parents together. Because the conversations that were had at home were about bills, debt, divorce. And the naive, innocent boy in me said, well, uh, I know what I need to do. I need to make money to keep my parents together. I didn't want to be the cool entrepreneur. I didn't want the watches. I didn't want the lifestyle. I just wanted my parents to not get divorced, which by the way, uh, they're still happily together, uh, still fighting uh, like typical Latinos, but I love them and they're perfectly imperfect. 
And at 13 years old, uh, I decided uh, to get my first job uh, making $5 an hour as a wedding photographer. And that uh, brought me to make my first six figures when I was 16, uh, not selling drugs. Uh, I was uh, a wedding photographer and that became my first profession. And I loved it because it gave me the opportunity to be around people and hide behind the camera. And that is where my personality began to flourish. And fast forward, I was 17 years old when I met Get Busy Izzy from 103.5, the new KTU. And I was blown away by this man. He was charismatic, good looking, well-dressed, confident, energetic, everything I was not. And I remember in a 17 year old days, just walking up to him and saying, uh, what the heck do you do? And he laughed. Uh, he told me and he became my mentor. And from that moment forward, I discovered the microphone and that led to my first uh, really incredible career in uh, events and entertainment. And that has led me uh, at least to the beginning stages of where I am today. So thank you for asking Adriana. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible story. At 13 years of age, you started working. And how is this? This is something that unifies all of us Latinos. You know, we always have our family in our hearts and we always want to provide for our family. That was also a dream of mine that if if God blessed me and if I was able to make the American dream, I will help my family as well. And that's currently what I do. And it's not, it's not a burden. It's actually I get to do this. I get the privilege to provide for my family. I get the privilege to share these blessings with my family. And that's something so special about immigrants, something that a lot of people don't understand. But it is it is actually uh, one of my purpose in life. And I see yours also. I'm being able to provide for your family so that they didn't have to get divorced. That's beautiful of you, Fernando, at 13 years of age, uh, going to work. So and then at 21, making your first um, and your first million through um, through photography, through your own business. That is incredible as well. Uh, how how dedicated you are. So um, I also want you to tell us about your college story. What was your career? What did you decide to study? How was your experience? Th take us a little bit into that journey. Uh, so Adriana, beautiful question. These are things that I, I don't really share as often anymore. Uh, growing up, uh, you know, I grew up in the typical thinking and system, uh, which I will address in a moment, that school was the key and that school was the future. And, um, the, you know, my parents didn't really ask me for a lot, but they certainly asked me to have good grades. And, um, you know, as a shy boy, I wasn't really the popular boy in school. I was short and chubby, as I mentioned. Um, so school really became my thing. And uh, I had the privilege to graduate with a 3.97 uh, GPA in high school. I was 13th of my class of close to 500. And I was given a full scholarship to NJCU, which is New Jersey City University. And I went to study business. Uh, just a quick footnote, uh, I would not accredit. Uh, I love NJCU. I love what it gave me, but I would not give my college education uh, the credit for my business acumen. In absolute reality, I didn't learn a single thing about business. And I do not blame the school. I blame the system. As the greatest thing uh, college taught me in business is to do a SWOT analysis. And I've done a grand total of zero SWOT analysis uh, ever since I graduated college. But here's what it did give me. It gave me access to join a fraternity. Tall Kappa Epsilon, also known as TKE. And I always say to my niece and nephew and many others, if you do not know what you want to do with your life or career, college is incredible. If you have an idea of what you want to do straight up, college is not necessary. That's my opinion. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying that is my opinion. But what it did give me uh, was my ability to grow socially. And what I love my fraternity for, and it is unfortunate that fraternities have such a, you know, let's go with stigma of partying and hazing and different things. And listen, I'm not going to speak on behalf of all fraternities in the world. Uh, some, you know, make some really poor decisions. Luckily, mine did not. And what my fraternity gave me uh, was a social gathering. It gave me the opportunity to learn how to lead. I had my greatest successes as a leader through my fraternity. And at the same time, I had my greatest failures. And the greatest gift uh, did not come from the successes. It actually came from the failures where my ego took over or my anger took over, uh, where I was selfish and not focused on the greater good of the group. And I was focused more on what I wanted and my entitlement. And it was from that pain uh, that came so much incredible awareness. And just as a contextual example, when I joined my fraternity originally, uh, it was a beautiful seven week process. And when I joined, I realized that our president had stolen $40,000. We were about to be unrecognized by nationals and kicked off campus. Oh, and P.S. No one mentioned that throughout the entire process. So here I come, wet behind the ears. I'm uh, 17 going into college. I'm now 18 as I joined my fraternity. And I'm like, holy F, what the heck is happening? Uh, this is not what I signed up for. 
But fast forward four years after, uh, we were the number one, the largest fraternity on my campus by a multiple of three. We had over 57 active members and the closest below us had under 15. Uh, we were number third in the nation out of 257 chapters at one point, you know, just keeping in mind, I was competing with schools like USC and the University of Florida who had hundreds of members. I believe USC had over 800 members, beautiful mansions, big houses, all these resources we did not. But what we had was dedication. What we had was leadership. And what we had was brotherhood. We eventually raised uh, over half a million dollars for nonprofits in my four years, which is certainly nothing to sneeze at from a young, a small commuter school. And our president at the time, uh, she is no longer there, said we were the greatest fraternity NJC had ever had. And I do not take full credit for that, but with absolute humility and truth, uh, I was definitely uh, one of the greatest leaders of that group. And I personally enrolled over 30 members uh, in my time there. And it was such an incredible experience. Uh, as I mentioned, I learned so much about leadership, what to do, what not to do. And I would not be the man I am if it was not for Tall Cap Epsilon TKE. Wow, Fernando, I love that story because like you say, usually American culture fraternities are known for partying and for just getting drunk and just, I don't know, just getting by. Uh, but your story of, you know, taking leadership and raising all this money for great purposes and also recruiting 30, 30 students for your fraternity, that is incredible. That is actually, um, I, I believe that you did great use of your college and it made you a better person for a leader and also persistency, persistency. For me, I'm a bigger, I'm a big believer in education. Uh, I believe that it creates a character and it, it builds that persistency in a person um, to show uh, that you are able to start and finish something. And if you do it with excellence, I also have great grades like you. So kudos to us great students. Uh, you know, if you do it with excellence, you actually uh, are a great example for other people and you uh, you can get, in, get into great relationships. And, and no, more than that, you're a great example for future generations and for your kids. So I'm so proud of you. Um, and I'm very happy to hear all of that story, how you transform your college into a leadership career. And I want you to tell us a little bit more about what did you decide to do when you were 23 years old? Yeah, so 23 years old, uh, I had already transitioned from being a photographer uh, to being a master of ceremonies. I had built my first million dollar business. I was doing about 2,500 events a year uh, on my business. It wasn't, uh, I didn't do all 2,500. I had a team of 20 plus and uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful career. And at 23, I decided to transition from weddings and sweet 16s and bar mitzvahs and uh, transition more into the corporate world. And uh, I've had the privilege to do events as small as five to as large as 500,000. I've worked with Amazon. I've worked with Coca-Cola. I've worked with Toys R Us. And uh, when I stepped into the corporate world, I was uh, really blown away. And just for you know contextual purposes, uh, New Jersey is the greatest uh, wedding capita in the entire United States. There's no um, state in the entire United States that has more wedding venues per square mile than New Jersey. And at the time, I don't know where it is now, the average uh, DJ MC four five hour package was anywhere between $900 and $1,500. And my starting rate was $3,000. And I had done that through building an incredible reputation. I had hundreds and hundreds of reviews. I had stellar testimonials. And uh, I sold the truth, and which is the foundation of why I got to Unblinded, where most people sold lights and TVs and things. I told them, uh, listen, I'm going to be real with you. People are not going to remember the glitz and the glam. They're going to remember the emotions. And I guarantee you, and I'm not saying this in like a, any other way, but a fun way, I guarantee you I will cause your entire family to cry, laugh, and party in ways that they never have because I understood the human psychology of emotion. And I didn't have words for this back then. I certainly do now and I have the privilege to teach and train it. But back then, I just knew I knew how to move a crowd. And um, that would be called group influence, which is what we studied together uh, and Grand Cayman. Uh, it was all about group influence. So 23 years old, uh, you know, my favorite number is 24. In my uh, vision of the world, um, 24 was going to be the greatest year of my life. And in actuality, uh, it was, um, but not exactly how I planned. At 23 years old, uh, I realized that I want to transition from that business. I was able to sell and exit, um, which sounds incredible on paper, but it was utterly painful uh, because in that moment, now that I look back, that I made the decision to uh, what I called at the time was change my identity. And as Tony Robbins would say, people will die for their identity. 
And at 23 years old, my identity was I was going to be the greatest entertainer on the planet. And the reason why I didn't want to do that, Adriana, and here's just the real truth. I'm not married yet. I'm dating my beautiful girlfriend, Martha, for four years. And um, at 23 years old, I didn't want my future daughter and or my future son, whatever God blesses me with, uh, when they asked, hey, what does daddy do for a living? I didn't want him or her to say, hey, daddy does parties. I don't think I'm above anyone that does. I don't think anyone that does is below, good or bad. It just, that, that wasn't the identity I wanted. And I didn't really know uh, what I wanted that identity to be, but I knew I didn't want it to be parties. So at 23, I took a leap of faith and I transitioned and I restarted my own uh, company again. But this time I was going to go to corporate America and I added in a little bit of digital marketing. And the truth is it was a little painful and bumpy. And there were some very dark times. And I remember many, many days where I just uh, getting out of bed was a victory. I remember many, many times uh, literally sitting in my car completely in tears as I was walking into meetings because I was scared and petrified, completely uh, overcome by fear of failure and rejection. And that led to an incredible career from 23 to 27, uh, where I rebuilt uh, my second million dollar business, this time with no partners. And I was doing uh, some pretty cool stuff. I was traveling the world. I was speaking on stages. I was actually ecosystem merging Adrian and didn't even know it because I didn't have words for it. And that led to uh, a lot of fun. And uh, at 27, I hit another point in my life where I had made the money. I had the time. I was taking the private jets. I was hanging out on the yachts. I had you know clothes and watches and things. And I was utterly unfulfilled as I saw a lot of what uh, the society now calls influencers that were selling a dream and had absolutely no substance. And I was disgusted because I didn't want my future daughter saying, yeah, daddy sells lies. And that's what I felt I was doing. Uh, I wasn't aligned with it. I really only sold things I believed in. But as I saw so many of these influencers promise a dream and then not deliver, I no longer wanted to be a part of that. And that leads me to 27, which is our previous part of the story, where I went to Tony Robbins and met Sean for the first time. Wow, how incredible. I love how we are going back circle and coming back to the beginning where you say that you met Tony Robbins and then somebody told you about Sean Callaghy and, and then about the peopleification, which I want you to explain to us later what that word means. Uh, and then the concept of time, magic, and money. So yeah, why I'm blinded? And I want to hear more about what's your why? What, what drives you every day? And what drives you every day to, to keep committed uh, to this movement and to, um, to keep influencing others to join the movement? Before we get to that, let's take a commercial break. You are watching the Adriana Montes Real Estate Show, and this is Adriana Montes, your host. We will be right back. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate, Programming Guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. Subscription is free. Sign up today. Thepowersnow.com. 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 